I wanted to come up here and talk to you in French, but I've been practicing, and then every time a word comes out of my mouth, I sound like this. <laughs> Joey from Friends. Uh, la buble, chu chu cha. I don't know. I can't speak French, not a word. But anyways, today I am going to talk about how myself and a few of the Ember devs at Forest took a really complex client problem and turned that into a really creative solution. And that solution is taking two Ember applications and turning it into one. So before we start, I do know there's some Forest people on the call watching. So hello from Paris. Thank you, thank you for all your support. So here is my obligatory, this is who I am slide. So that being said, you can follow me on all those social medias, business and personal. Uh, by day, I am a software engineer at Forest. And then by night, I love to travel around and adventure on the shared planet Earth that we are on today. And then I am also a podcast co-host of FizzBuzz Podcast. And speaking of FizzBuzz, please follow us on Instagram um, and listen to the podcast. Uh, so for those of you who don't know what FizzBuzz is, uh, it's made with love from my sitting room. And then my co-host, Stacy and I, that's Stacy, uh, and that's me, if you don't recognize me. <laughs> uh, we are basically having a few drinks, and then we chat about software development, we want to teach you about tech things, and changing careers, essentially, because we both change careers. Uh, and our goal here is to just have a safe environment for people to learn about tech and join tech and, of course, have a bit of a laugh at the end of the day. So please follow us on Instagram and Twitter. You can email us as well. Um, and then we're on all of the platforms for listening, Apple, Google, Spotify, so on and so forth. And get a sticker. We've got stickers, so yes. <laughs> Okay, so let's dive in. So this talk is a lot about Forest, and you need some context before we dive in. So at Forest, our company goal is to be the number one salon software in the world. It's a pretty big goal, I think. With that, we want to get from 9,000 to 15,000 salons by the end of 2023. So that's next year. <laughs> so it's, it's coming up anyway. So a bit of background. Forest has been around for a really long time. With that, we have clients who have been with us since the beginning. With that, they're quite dependent on us to run their business. They're also really loyal to us as well. With that in mind, though, there are cons to being an established company. And one of those cons is having to deal with legacy code. So our legacy system is a Swing Java desktop application. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that being said, this is nothing to sniff at because this made Forest what it is today. Alongside this, when we were developing this, this was the trendy way to deliver software and what our clients expected. However, as we know, technology is always changing. So now our clients are expecting modern web applications. So with that being said, about five years ago, we decided to start from scratch and have a rewrite with a modern Ember application. So here at Forest, one of our uh, core values is Sarish Gahintak. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Uh, can anyone at Forest tell me what that means? Excellence in service, yes. So Sarish Gahintak means excellence in service in Irish, because we're an Irish company. And with that, we really tried to hold that core value when we were developing. So we didn't start with any invasive features, because we didn't want to affect our clients day to day when they were running their business. 
we also ended up developing brand new features so they could continue running their business and grow their business uh, with things that they didn't have before. Alongside this, we ended up embedding that application into the Swing Java desktop app. Now, this was really good for our clients because they could use the old features and the new features side by side, no bother at all. However, this ended up being a design flaw because that Ember application ended up needing the container that it was living in to authenticate, along with a myriad of other things. We ended up having to use many customizable serializers and adapters versus the regular old JSON API. And that's, yeah, that's it. So with that in mind, we decided to start from scratch. And we decided to make a brand new, lightweight Ember application. So we kind of felt at a loss, though, when we started the new app, because the old app, we used Octane. We were using all of the Ember best practices, and we even migrated from Ember 3.1 to Ember 3.25. So we kind of felt like the last five years was a huge waste of time. And then the light bulb went off. And we realized that all we needed was a container for the old Ember app to live in. And that new browser application was the perfect home for the web app. So this is kind of weird, isn't it? So do you think that this is the right thing to do? Well, I know that by the end of this talk, I will definitely have convinced you. OK, so let's hear from the audience. What does legacy mean to you? What is legacy? Code written yesterday. <laughs> Code written today as well. Oh, it's working. Oh, good. Old stuff. OK, go on in. <laughs> Dirty code. Yeah, definitely C sharp. Hmm? Really? <laughs> Java, yes, absolutely. Yeah, forget React. All the way. <laughs> Parents, pain, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All of this is legacy. <laughs> Uh, and the list goes on and on. You can keep putting things in here. Outdated Ember apps, yeah. Code with tests, or without tests, sorry. We want code with tests, put it that way. Aaron Chambers, huh? <laughs> good to know, good to know. So, for the context of this conversation, we have a definition. And legacy means that we are using an outdated computer software that is still in use. The system still meets the needs it was originally designed for, but it doesn't allow for growth. So our Swing Java desktop application won't get us to 15,000 salons, but our modern web application will. So. Hopefully it works again. Uh, I'd like to hear from you on how you handle your tech debt, because as we were already mentioning before, with legacy, there's always tech debt involved. Now, I know for me, I've deleted production once or twice. Um, I'm always crying in the corner. Just yesterday, I was in the fetal position crying. Um, yeah, and then ask my team, I'm always complaining. I might as well be French. I'm always complaining. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. So all of the above, I think, is right in the, the, the right way. But I think here at Forest, we especially, as I think that we all agree, find cool and creative ways to handle our tech debt. 
And now begins the saga of how two Ember apps become one. And yeah, I did create that GIF. I was really happy with it, actually. So, so now we're going to dive in to the technical nitty gritty. So there are two Ember applications. There's the host app, and then there's the embedded app. And both of these applications have a service. And these services are responsible for sending messages back and forth to each other. And then we send those messages via post message. And a post message is essentially a method that can safely send cross-origin messages between windows. So an example of that would be a page and a pop-up that it spawned, or a page and an iframe. And the latter is more our use case. Then we can receive those messages by using event listeners. An event listener is essentially a method that will call another method when a message is received by the given target. Then, in the host application, we have a root, and that root is responsible for reflecting the embedded application's root in the address bar. And then the host app also has a component, and that component is where the iframe lives, and the iframe will house the Ember app. So now we're going to talk about how the application boots. And essentially, when it boots, the client is going to be in the host app, and then it clicks in to the embedded app. So the first thing that happens is when it clicks in, the host app will launch the iframe, it will then register the event listener, and then it'll send the, the post app message to the embedded app, the first message. So on launch, the embedded app will register its event listener, and now it's ready to receive those messages from the host app. Once it receives that message, the embedded app will boot, and it'll let the host app know that it's booted up. Then finally, the host app will update its URL in the address bar, and then the embedded app will navigate to that route. Now, I know what you're all thinking. What happens when the user is in the embedded app and then clicks out back into the host app? Well, we sorted that too. So essentially, what happens is the host app sends another post message to the embedded app, just letting it know it's time to tear down. Then both event listeners are removed, and the host app will destroy the iframe. So now we're going to talk about how we root between two applications. So I kind of like to compare this to a network three-way handshake. And this handshake can be initiated from both the host app and the embedded app. So in this instance, the host app will send a message to the embedded app, just requesting it to update its path. Then the embedded app will navigate to that route and let the host app know. The host app will update its URL and then let the embedded app know that the URL has been updated. And then, when this initiation happens from the embedded app, it's very similar to the other one, but basically reversed. So the embedded app will send the host app a request just asking it to update its URL. Once the URL is updated in the address bar, it'll send a message back to the embedded app, letting it know that it's been updated. And then the embedded app will navigate to that route, and let the host app know. And I know that I've broken it down here, but it actually happens at lightning speed. Like you blink and you're there. So essentially, hopefully this plays, so we click into the embedded app from the host app, and you can see that the host app is sending the embedded app the message, and then the embedded app will navigate to that route. Then when you're in the embedded app, navigating to another route in the embedded app, just lets the host app know, and then both the address bar and the route is changed. And actually, that process works the same when you use the back button and the forward button as well. 
So now, the embedded app has a helper. That helper is, is running in iframe, and this is in charge of checking who is my container. Because up to this point, this Ember app was only running in the container in the Swing Java desktop application, where now it has a second container. So as you would expect, this returns a Boolean. And if the embedded app is running in an iframe and is running in the browser, then it'll return true, or else, as you would expect, it returns false. So here's an example of how we use this helper in a template file. So essentially what we're doing is we're just wrapping it around this button. And in this instance, if we're in the desktop app, we want the button to show. And if not, we want the button to be gone. So uh, before and after, so on the left, the button is there in the desktop app. And then on the right, the button is not there, as you would expect. And then here is an example of how we use this helper in a JavaScript file. So essentially, we import the service, and then we can, or not the service, the helper, then we can use that method wherever we want within the file. So in this instance, we use uh, the window object. We pass that in. And if true, we are in the browser and in an iframe. We're going to use session storage, or else we're going to use local storage for the desktop. No more context there, sorry. Uh, but you can see on the left, we're using local storage. On the right, we're using session storage. Big shout out to Ember Browser Services. This uh, we heavily use during this project. And it's an open source library uh, made by CrowdStrike, who's here today. So <laughs> big shout out. So Ember Browser Services is a collection of Ember services that consistently uses browser API. And what's beneficial about this is when we use these browser services, uh, then we can actually test them. Uh, and we all know that if we don't test our code, then code's already legacy. So finally, in the embedded app, we have an iframe override style sheet. And this is one single style sheet that we use to override all of the styles in the app. So you don't have to navigate into all of the different CSS files throughout the app. It's just done in this one place. And essentially, on boot, we will add this class name embedded in browser. And if that class name exists, that's when we know it's time to override. So a bit of compare and contrast. Can you see the difference? Can you guess which one's which? Maybe, what do you think? Right, left? The right is the new or the old? The new, you're right, you're right. The right is the new. Now I know the changes are actually quite subtle, but actually it makes a huge impact because now when the user is using the web app, they're able to go from the host app to the embedded app and they won't even know that they're in two different applications. So this, even though a small change, makes a massive difference. So here is Zoe. She went to a forest salon. She got a hold of those CSS overrides. And now she is a perfect forest French hamster. So in summary, the host application has a service, and that service is responsible for sending messages back and forth to each other. It has the root, which will mirror the embedded app's root, and then a component which uses the iframe to house the embedded app. And then the embedded app has that same or very similar service, sending messages back and forth to the host app, a helper which checks which container am I living in, and then a style sheet to allow for consistent styling throughout both applications. So with all this being said, what could go wrong? Nothing. Or everything. I don't know. But over the last few months, we have been doing a plethora of market research, been trying to get as much client feedback as we possibly can. And we came back with a few really interesting uh, stats. So the first one 
is that competitors who have done similar technological migrations, such as the one that we're doing now, have actually lost 10% of their client base. But as I was telling you before, we're trying to actually get to 15,000 salons. So if we lose 10% of our client base, that's going to be that much harder to get there. So we want to make sure that every single salon stays with us during our migration. Then we also found that almost half of our users are actually concerned that they won't remember a username and password when logging in. And finally, 65%, which is pretty jarring, actually expect their software to be both a desktop app and a browser app. And you can actually see this out in the wild with Spotify, Zoom, and Slack. So very interesting stuff. So what have we done to resolve this? And how does this affect the embedded applications? Well, the first two, I really would like to just say it's just temporary. As we, it's a strategy as we migrate over. But uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to embed the browser app inside the Swing Java desktop application. So it's going to be like Inception, <laughs> kind of. Um, and we do this because, kind of like I said earlier, we want our clients to be able to give us feedback on the work that we've done. And then we want them to be able to use these features. And then with the embedded screens, instead of what's basically going to change, instead of the screens being embedded in the browser app, they're going to be embedded as a sibling in the desktop app. Then we created an auto login link. So this essentially means that in the desktop app, in the embedded Ember app, we have a link which will allow you to link out to the browser without having to log in. So we pass in the authentication credentials. And this is really beneficial because alongside with this migration, there are teams that are constantly developing new features. And we want clients to use this right away so we can get feedback. So this is a really good way for clients to quickly use that browser experience without actually embedding the application. So like I said, those are temporary. And it's a long-term strategy to get us all the way to browser. And then finally, we are also creating an Electron app. And we're slowly moving clients from the Swing Java desktop app over to the Electron app. And then clients have the ability to use the desktop application in Electron or the browser experience. So no matter what, we're going to do everything we can and constantly iterate to give them what they need. So please indulge me just a second. The team has been working so hard on the appointment screen and different applications. So I just want to show you a little bit. Let's just pretend we're in a salon, OK? Ring, ring. Mo Salon, how can I help you? Oh, yeah, you want to book an appointment? Great, yeah. Can I get your name? Macron. Macron. OK, uh, Emmanuel Macron. <gasps> Emmanuel Macron. OK, OK, great. Yet you want to come into your regular booking? Yeah, acrylic nails. Ah, <laughs> wonderful. OK, we'll see you later. So this is the browser experience here. And then we're going to click in here. And we're actually going to go into the embedded screens. You can see here, it takes a hot second to load which I didn't think about this. But then you can see here that we can click in and seamlessly use the application as expected. So yeah, thank you so much. So as promised, this question would come up again. Do we have the right approach? Well, the answer is yes, because no matter what, we're always coming back to our clients. We're always making sure that their needs come first in our software. So that being said, does any of this resonate with you? Have you experienced similar problems in your code? 
And if not, has this maybe inspired you to find creative ways to deal with your legacy? Food for thought. Thank you so much.